Hello, how's it going everyone? Lord of the Zeke's here, back with another video, and today we are going to be showing off the top 20 best transformations for Zoroa and Pokemon Go. So strap yourselves in for a fun ride as we're going to be transforming Zoro into plenty of different buddy Pokemon. We're doing Mega Pidgeot! Look at this thing! Here we go, let's see how long of a, of a wingspan this thing has in here. Oh my god! So before we get started with the Zoroa transformations, let me just give a brief introduction to Zoro as a Pokemon and why it's such a cool Pokemon that's introduced into Pokemon Go specifically. So Zoro is a new Pokemon that allows itself to transform into different Pokemon. Now Pokemon Go, it transforms into your buddy Pokemon on the map and then when you catch it, it transforms back into its original form. So you can imagine all the crazy things that people are doing with this Pokemon, making it shinies, making it, you know, legendaries. So we're going to be doing just that today. I'm going to showcase off probably the most interesting one that we could have. And that is, what if you make Zorba your actual buddy? So I actually did a screen recording of that earlier last night when Zora first came out. As you can see, it's just a, it's a straight up Zora. You know, it doesn't transform. You just see Zora on the map, and when it's caught, it just stays as Zora. So that is a really cool thing to, to note. And by the end of the video, we're actually gonna evolve the Zora and make the Zoro arc our buddy and see what happens with that. So now that that's out of the way, let's start off with my first encounter here. So I decided to start off with Tyrantrum. All right, so here we go in the map. Uh, there's a Kartana there as well. Don't mind that, that was my buddy beforehand, but we'll get into the Ultra Beast soon. Uh, that's a good example of what we can do with it. But look at this, Tyrantrum. We've never been able to catch that in the wild and it's just up in your face. Have a look at that. So we're gonna also do Aurorus because it's another big dinosaur Pokemon that's a fossil that you would never be able to catch in the wild in the first place. So here we go, here is the Tyrantrum. Look at that thing, it's huge, look at the face on it, oh. And there's the Zorua. So we're gonna be seeing a ton of that today. So let's move on to Aurorus. Okay, funny enough, I don't actually own an Aurorus. So let's move on to the next one, which I was gonna talk about, which is regional Pokemon. So moving forward, just keep in mind that you do have to own the Pokemon and make it your buddy to actually have the Pokemon spawn. So don't make the same mistake that I did, all right? So here we go, we have Sigilith. I was very fortunate to get this from a uh, lucky trainer from a friend of mine who went and traveled all the way to Greece to grab one of these for me, so. Yeah, this is kind of cool. It kind of gives you that feeling of, ooh, you can get a regional that's in another region that's not actually here. It's kind of a neat little fun feature that you can see. I, I really like this feature a lot, as you can tell. That's why I'm making the video. So there we go. There's the Sigilus. But keep in mind, this can be every single regional. So let's go to the next regional Pokemon that I'm going to do. So next up is Oricorio. I thought it'd be cool to show off one of the unique forms that I own that I actually can't catch in my region. So this one here is the Japanese form. The one that's in uh, the Japan and, and South Asia region, which is really cool. I think that's really nice one to show off as well. Now there's one more regional I want to show off for this video, and that's because it is one of the smallest Pokemon in this video as well. So let's just watch it transform, and let's go now the next and final regional for this video. So I've gotten smarter now because I'm actually using the incense to try and get the new transformations of the Zorua to come in faster. But thankfully this one was a relatively new spawn, so it's Flabebe. So that is the Zorua hidden encounter for us here. Now why did I pick Flabebe? Well because it is known to be like the smallest Pokemon in the franchise currently, actually it's tied with I believe uh, Col with uh, the Combi, not the Combi, um, the Bombies uh, pre-evolution, but look at that. And I'm thinking of the name, but it's Cutie Fly. That's the name, Cutie Fly, if you know the Pokemon. But look at that, that was so tiny. Oh my goodness. Check the abuse in the Zorua. And that is it for regionals. So next we're gonna move on from the smallest Pokemon to the largest Pokemon. So some of you already have an idea of what that's going to look like. Here we are, we found the Wailord. Can we click on it? Oh my gosh, it is huge. Look at it, it's bottom belly touches the ground of the game. That is absolutely weird, but so much fun to look at. Also, I apologize for the lighting here. I had to quickly click, click on this because it was off the incense. So let's catch this. Not even an extra throw. And let's see how big it'll be in front of me when it transforms into the Zorua. Let's have a look, three, two, one. 
Oh my gosh, that's huge. All right, and then a little door will come out of it. Okay, there you go. Uh, if you ever wonder what the whale lord looks like, there you have it. So our next spawn is actually going to be a topic that a lot of people are focusing on when it comes to Zorua. So that topic I'm referring to are shiny Pokemon in the wild as an overworld shiny. So this is the first time we've ever received overworld shinies in the game. And I think it's a nice new breath of fresh air. Also, I picked the shiny Riola because the first time we're able to catch baby Pokemon in the wild as well. So kind of a double whammy on that. But it brings a new breath of fresh air to the game. Like we're able to catch but different Pokemon that we've never actually been able to see in the game before. So uh, I'll go through a couple more. Oh my god, that's so tiny. <laughs> I'll go through a couple more Pokemon in terms of shinies that are kind of neat to catch and transform in terms of this uh, Zoroa feature transformations. Next up, we have the shiny Spiritomb with the Best Buddy Ribbon. So I picked it because it has that Best Buddy Ribbon. This is one of my very infamous shinies that I've found on the channel with you guys and the best buddy. But on top of this, like look at the ribbon. The ribbon still stays off of the spirit tomb when it's when it's in the wild. That's crazy. And the fact that we didn't get spirit tomb this year for the Halloween event, I said why not bring it back? Because I really wanted to see it in the wild at least once this year. So there we go. And let's see it transform. How big is spirit tomb? Okay, it's a, it's a regular size. It's not that crazy. Okay, so Spirit Tomb is down, and then I have a couple more shinies to go. Imagine you're just sitting in your house, and then all of a sudden you see a Snorlax and a shiny Snorlax in your house. I love the look of this one. Again, one of those really rare shinies that are in the game. So the fact that you could potentially prank your friends with this one and say, Oh look, I just got a shiny Snorlax. And then you catch it and then it transforms for the rise. I think it's a cool one. So I had to showcase this one just one. Plus it has the best buddy ribbon and it's one of my favorite memories that I've made. Also, wow, that one's huger than the, the whale, whale lord. That's ridiculous. But there we go. Another one off the list. And I'm gonna do one more shiny, and it's a very special shiny that I wanna explain for the video as well. Shiny Mew is next up on our list for transformations for Zorua. And with it being one of the rarest Pokemon in the game, in my personal opinion, because you can only get one of them, I have to say, this is one of my favorites that I could transform. And I wanna see what happens when it transforms, how small the Mew is. So yeah, I, I was just wanted to show that you can do mythicals. You can do Ultra Beasts as well, so that'll be probably one of my next ones that I do. But yeah, look at this. Here we go. Shiny Mew transforming to Zorua. That is really cool. Next up, let's try an Ultra Beast. So as you guys saw in the beginning of the video, Pokemon such as the Ultra Beast as well can be encountered as Zorua in the wild and can be transformed into Zorua. So I thought it'd be cool to put Nihiligo, not just because I have a Hundo as my first Hundo Ultra Beast, but because I really like the look of Nihiligo and it's very unique in terms of a typing, right? The only rock poison type to my knowledge. So there we go, very nice and boom, Zorua. So now we're gonna try Pokemon that are not encounterable in the wild on a normal circumstance, all right? So let's begin with those ones. First up, we have Meloetta. So I know we already touched on the topic of the mythical Pokemon being able to transform to Zorua, but I specifically brought this one out because it's the first time we've been able to catch a Meloetta like this outside of its background screen for the either quest line or the Meloetta for the Go Fest. So I thought it'd be cool to have this one just transfer because of how tiny it is again. I like the tiny ones, they're really cool to see. And there we go, the Zorua. So let's move on to the next one. Next up, we have Shedinja. So again, Shedinja is one of the Pokemon that it's kind of relevant because of this season here. We have Shedinja as the research breakthrough for the month of October, but like it's never been actually spawned in the wild. So it's kind of cool to see. And then of course we lose it and it transforms back into the Zorua. Also, that Shedinja is very tiny. Okay, let's try this on a couple more Pokemon before we get into the really spicy ones for the video. Look at the size of the Overquill. Oh my god! Oh, that's huge on the map. Also, the hit radius. 
just as big as the Meloetta. So I'm thinking Pokemon don't really have a catch encounter in the wild. They just give them this big, massive, giant circle. Cause we saw it with a couple of them already that we aren't supposed to be seeing in the wild. So it's like maybe a placeholder, but it's still really cool to see. Like, look at this thing. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's massive. Okay. Let's try again on another one. To this day, I'm not sure why this Pokemon isn't just in the wild like this, but it's stuck in the 12 kilometer eggs. I don't understand why. I really don't. But here's what it would look like if you saw Salanus in the wild like they should have been. I will never understand this. And when I'm thinking about this one, maybe I should have done the Salazzle just because I could have flexed the fact that I have a female Salandit that I mirror trade with somebody and it's lucky. But regardless of the point, I'm not sure maybe we'll really upset in this video. I'm just trying to show you some of the cool things. And look at how teeny tiny that one is too. I swear, some of these are smaller than the Flubebe that I did earlier, but hey, this is Niantic, right? They don't always size things perfectly. The Whale Lord should have been huge, like larger than that, but it wasn't. So now we're gonna move on to a couple more before we try the Zora work. So next up is a Mega. So I'm sure when I mentioned the word Mega, you all thought I was gonna do Mega Gengar, right? Wrong, we're doing Mega Pidgeot. Look at this thing. I'm doing it for the memes on my channel because most of my long-term viewers know that I haven't been able to get a Hundo Pidgey. And I just recently got a Hundo Pidgeotto, but not a Hundo Pidgey. So the memes still continue on this channel for the Hundo Pidgey. So here we go. Let's see how long of a, of a wingspan this thing has in here. Oh my god! <laughs> I did not expect that. I thought maybe it would be miniaturized down, but no, you just see the belly. It's flying up there like crazy. That was a good one. That was a good one. See, this is what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the funny ones when we're trying to transform these things from the, from the regular Pokemon to Zorua. Okay, let's try a couple more. So yes, you are seeing this correct. The costume Pokemon as well can be the Zoruas which I am very happy about because I like seeing this costume specifically. We didn't get it this year for the fashion week, unfortunately, the sassy Sneasel, but maybe in the future it'll come back again. And it ran away. Oh, okay, there we go. You know what? Screw you, Zoro. We're gonna try it again. What was the different Zoro? Hopefully more cooperative one because that was so rude. We wanted to see it transform. And then all of a sudden it just runs away on us. Okay, well, there you have it, folks. Not every sword we're gonna catch. That's the reality of this video. There we go, okay, and... Okay, it's a regular side Pokemon. And my headphone came out. Ooh! There we go, Zora is caught. All right, let's go to our next transformation. So this is the one that I was most excited for, trying out a Shadow Shiny Pokemon. Look at this! Shadow Shiny Beldum in the wild. That's really ridiculous. I've heard from, from some reports that apparently it can break the game and then Zoro will just be a Zoro in the wild. But we're gonna see after this one if, it, if it'll still be the Pokemon that we're trying to change it to or not after we're done with this. But this is this is just so cool. I love the look of this one. I should have maybe evolved into Metagross, but I wanted to keep that. And look at it all. Oh. And there it goes. Back to Zoro again. Okay, two more to go before we wrap up with the final one. The next one is going to be a Galarian Articuno. If you or anyone you know has been lucky enough to get the Galarian birds from the Daily Incense, and you want more of them, then here you go. And these ones have a lot easier of a cat trade, believe me. Look at this, I'll do one throw and uh, it'll catch right away for you guys. So if you want to see more Galarian birds and you've been able to catch it, give it a shot and see, here you go. Now let's see the transformation for this one. How big is it gonna be? Oh, it's a decent size actually. Not as big as Pidgeot, but it's still a pretty decent size. And now let's go to one more interesting transformation I want to do before we end off with the Zoroark. Here is our final transformation before the Zoroark, and that is going to be an Apex Lugia. Why not, right? I thought I would try it out because Apex Legendaries are such an interesting topic. We've only received two of them, and that's being Lugia and Ho-Oh. They never revisited this topic, and I hope they do for the impending Hoenn tour, which we all are expecting this year. But here we are, the Zorua is gonna transform now. Here it is. Wow, look at that. The Lugia was barely visible fully on that one. So there we go. We got that done. And without further ado, 
Let's grab our Zorua here. I have a three-star one that I want to evolve for you guys right now. And let's get this registered to the decks. Registered, and then we're going to put it as our buddy and see what happens. So I'm going to let these fix themselves because obviously I want to have enough Zora works to try and find it in a good capacity for tomorrow. So we're going to let this be our buddy for today and then we'll come back tomorrow and I'll show you guys just exactly what is going to happen. So here it is. Ready? Change the buddy into Zoroark. And now let us see what happens when we make Zoroark our buddy and we try and catch a Zorua. So here we are after three days of trying to change my buddy up in order to get different buddies to appear on the map. We're at the final one and it is the Zoroark. So it checks out perfectly fine right now. Right now it is Zoroark in the, in the wild. But will it transform into Zorua? Because that essentially taught me that if you have your buddies the evolve form, it just transforms into the pre-evolution, which is kind of funny. But I guess that means we'll never be able to evolve Zoroarks in the wild. Here it comes. Okay, and there you go. Yep, that's the answer. It just de-evolves itself essentially. So it can mask itself as the evolution as well. So any Pokemon you think about that's in your box that you have sitting in there, make it your buddy, and there you have it. It, it transforms back into Zorua. So let's go back home now and let's uh, finish up by showing you any of the highlights that I got during the part two of the Halloween event. So I hope you guys enjoyed the Zorua transformations. I thought I would try a little bit of something different, something more fast paced. I usually like to take my time and have a more relaxing video with you guys. So if you guys like this, let me know and I will uh, do this more often. But to wrap up the video, I thought I would show you all the Pokemon that I got in terms of shinies because I was going to make a separate video for Halloween part two, where I was going to try and do like a, a find the Zorua. So like a scavenger hunt or like a hide and go seek pretty well of like trying to find the Zorua. I was going to make it like a, my buddy, a very common poke for the Halloween event. And then I was going to go and try and find it. But obviously I'm not doing that because I didn't have enough time. So I had to prioritize what video I wanted to do. And I preferred to do this one. So let's bring up the game. We got a lot of shinies. It is the uh, day of the dead event. So I did get a shiny wild hound in the wild, my first one ever. So that's checked off the list for all the mega evolutions that I was trying to get in the wild, shiny. And we did get the pumpkaboo. We did get them. We got a small, really small one, and we got the average size one. So we didn't get the large or the extra large ones. But at the end of the day, I'm very happy with how it turned out because because of the whole Zoro mishap, the auto catchers and the go pluses were disabled for the entire part two pretty well. So people couldn't really do much with it. And it sucked because I really wanted to hunt a lot more of this, but trying to spin stops the entire time, I'll be honest with you guys and hope some of you can sympathize for me and agree. Spinning stops instead of having something spin it for you can be uh, quite boring after a while. So um, I like having my auto spinner and uh, I'm not gonna go and, and say that I, I, I'm not gonna add the fact that I don't. So. At the end of the day, we did pretty well, and I got a Doduo from the Doduo Nest as well. That was happening at Chinkuzi Park, but lots and lots of Giratina. This is the best one I have, 96 shiny. Still looking for that hundo, so if you find any raids, let me know. I'm trying to get that hundo! I cannot believe we're already over 500 raids and still going. So wish me luck, guys, but that's going to be it. I don't have anything else to add to the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys liked the Zora transformations. Let me know in the comment section below what you transformed it into, if you had some fun with it, and how did your Halloween Part 2 event go? I know it was a little bit rocky with the uh, Zoro being put into the game, but now it's all fixed and uh, it doesn't look like Zoro is really spawning that much anymore anyways. So, thank you so much for watching, and as always, make sure to boom, hit the like button, click the button down below, subscribe to the channel beside it, so you know if I want to put a new video. I've been learning to and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care, buddy.